Okay, we have here today another integral, MIT 2025 quarterfinals, tiebreaker number three. We have the integral from zero to 2025, floor function of x over the ceiling function of square root of x dx. Okay, this one is kind of tricky. The trouble I have with it, it's having two floor ceiling functions, right? If we just had the ceiling, sorry, if we just had the floor function, I could break it up on integer bounds and that's nice. If we just had this expression in the denominator, we could like simplify it with a u substitution in order to clean that up. But the way we have it, if I do something to simplify the numerator, the denominator is a problem. If I try to simplify on the denominator, the numerator is a problem. Well, what I'm gonna do is basically just pick one and generalize it. I'm gonna, let's simplify the numerator. So the way I would normally do this is split it up on integers. So go from zero to one, one to two, et cetera. And then we can generalize this. So if I have an integral, we'll say we're going from n to n plus one, where n is going to be an integer. The floor function is going to round us down. So if we're looking at x values between n and n plus one, the floor is going to round us down to this lower value. And so the numerator is always going to be n. Now for this denominator, of course, it's going to be more complicated. We don't really know. I mean, actually, if we went through it, we could find the value, right? Like if I told you that n and n plus one, like if I said n was seven and n plus one is gonna be eight, we could easily find it. We get the square root, it's between two and three, and the ceiling rounds us up to three. The only trouble is I don't wanna go through 2025 integrals right now. So what I'm gonna do is just say it's gonna be a constant and we'll say it's gonna be some specific constant based on our n value, and we'll just come back and use that later. And now for our whole expression, it's not gonna, of course, be one integral, it's gonna be all of these. So we need to sum this up, turn this into a summation. So our first value, our lower bound's gonna be zero. So we're gonna be going from n equals zero to 2024. Not 2025, as if you plug in 2024, the last integral is gonna go from 2024 to 2025. And so this is gonna be the expression we need. I'm not really sure why I put it over here. Let's move everything over to the left. Okay, now from here, what we notice is everything in here is just a constant with respect to the integral. We've got no x value anymore. So we can take everything and bring it out front of the integral and then just integrate one. But then the integral is pretty much the easiest integral we could have. So when we integrate this, we just get an x from n to n plus one. When you evaluate that, you get n plus one minus n, but the n's cancel, and this is just one. So this whole piece here goes away. This is just multiplying by one. And so I can just, I can really just clean all this stuff up and we can just deal with a series. So now we've got a pretty simple looking series. We can start, we can start expanding out some terms, just starting at zero. So, I mean, the confusing part is we don't quite know what these c's are yet. But the numerator is just going to be counting up from zero and it's going to be something like this and i don't have a lot of space but eventually this thing is going to get all the way to 2024 and we'll have our c 2024. now we want to find a way to add all this stuff up at least one thing we know is this is just going to be a zero so we don't have to worry about that we'll start at our one term or i mean we could change the index too it doesn't matter what I thought I'd do is just expand out a section of this just to derive some of these constants to get a feel for it. The key thing to notice here is what I used is the perfect squares are gonna be key. So like four is a perfect square, nine is a perfect square, 16 is a perfect square. One thing to notice is the difference between them, like from four to nine is five, from nine to 16 is seven. And that pattern is just gonna continue that way all the way to 2025. So starting at four and kind of going back, like looking at the way we have it set up from n to n plus one, if you think about values between four and five and you take the square root of them, they're gonna be a little bit greater than two. And then the ceiling function is gonna round them up. So what's gonna happen is this denominator is always gonna be a three. And the same thing with five, it's gonna be, when you take the square root, it's gonna be like something like maybe like two and a half. You take the ceiling, it rounds you up to three. What's gonna happen is all these values, nothing is gonna change until we get to another perfect square. Even at eight, that's gonna be getting closer to three, but not quite three. The ceiling rounds us up to three. It's not until the end value is nine that we have a change. Now, one thing that can be a little confusing about this, if you just plug in nine, you get the square root of nine is three. 
for an integer value, the ceiling is still a three. So you might wanna put down a three right here. The reason that it's actually not a three right here, if you think of this as an integral, which it is where we started with, and our n value is a nine. So we're looking at the integral from nine to 10. Technically at the end point, you're gonna get square root of nine is three, but we don't really care about the endpoints for an integral. You can think of it like a limit where it's like, we're think about it starting at like 9.0001 or whatever. You take the square root, it's a little bit greater than three. And if it's greater than three, the ceiling rounds us up to the next value. So this is actually gonna start at four. And so then the same pattern is gonna repeat. When you have a 10, you're gonna get, you know, it's gonna be something like 3.1, 3.2, ceiling function rounds us up to four, and the same thing's gonna happen for all of these. The square root of 15 is getting closer to four, but not quite, ceiling takes us to four. And then at 16, it's the exact same scenario as this. If you don't evaluate at the endpoints, you're gonna be a little bit greater than four, and the ceiling is gonna round this one up to five. So this right here is more than enough to see our pattern. Really all you needed was just one, just to go between two different perfect squares, and you have your pattern. So you could just focus in on this, and this is just gonna repeat. What's going on in the numerator is really straightforward. It's just an arithmetic series. Our difference between terms is just one. It's a lot like the first n counting numbers, except we're not necessarily starting at one. I guess for the first one, we're starting at one, but for each of these other chunks, we're gonna be starting at something else, like four or nine or 16. So for this, we can use our arithmetic series formula, which is just gonna be a1 plus an divided by two, it's just the average of the first term and the last term times the number of terms. So for this case right here, it'll be real easy, right? Eight plus four is 12 over two plus five terms, six times five, this is gonna be 30. But I don't really care about this too much because I don't wanna calculate out the whole thing to 2025. I mean, it's doable, but that would probably take forever. So we're gonna to try to do this with a formula. All we're gonna have is, for each of these, we're gonna have our arithmetic series, and then we're gonna have it over some other value. We'll call this denominator for each of these. We'll call this a K. Get rid of this, and then in order to get our value, what we can do is turn this into a sum with our index based on K. You'll notice here we're at three, so for the values like one, two, three, those are gonna be starting at two. So our K value for our denominator value is gonna be starting at two. And I'll tell you why in a second, but our upper bound here is going to be 45. But in order to calculate this, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to get this entirely in, in terms of K, because it's kind of, I mean, we really kind of have three different variables here. It's confusing. So if I just get this all into K, then we can calculate it. So we can come up with some values for A1, AN, and N, like this A1 value. In every case, what you'll notice is for A1, this is just going to be our K minus one squared, like here, you take the K as four, subtract one, three squared gets you the nine. And then for the last value, like our AN value here is 15. So for the AN, all that is, is that's just gonna be our K squared minus one. So we have that for our A sub N value. And for N one, we can just subtract the last term from the first term because our difference is one. So it's gonna be AN minus A one plus one. Like if you do here, A, so if you do here like eight minus four, you get four plus one because we've got five terms here. So for N, just subtracting these, we're gonna have K squared minus one minus K minus one squared, and then we need to do a plus one on it. But the minus one and one, that's gonna cancel. K squareds are gonna cancel. When you simplify this all the way down, what you're gonna get for N is gonna be just two K minus one. Now, before I plug back in, let's get a little simplification. I can expand this out as x squared minus 2k plus 1. So now putting this together, what's going to happen? I can bring the 2 into the denominator so we can have this as 2k a1 plus an. Adding these two together, we're going to get 2k squared minus 2k. And the plus 1 and minus 1 is going to cancel, so we'll just leave that. And then our n value... Let's write it out like this, 2k minus one. But now let's just simplify this. Here we got 2k in common. I can factor out a 2k from this thing right here. So what's gonna happen is we have, so now I can write this as 2k. This becomes just k minus one for this piece times 2k minus one over 2k. 
but 2k, that's gonna cancel here. And then with what's left, I can just multiply it out and we get 2k squared minus 3k plus one. And so let me clean up the board and we'll see if we can calculate this sum right here. Okay, so bringing this sum over from the previous board, what I did actually was I just split it up. So because we're adding and subtracting, break it up into three sums and just factor the constants out front just to make it easier to calculate. And one thing I wanted to get back to, I didn't really explain why we have 45 as the upper bound. That's just because I expanded out the last few terms right here. You'll notice with this pattern, right, where four, this, when you square four, you get the 16, which is the next perfect square. If you square 45, you get to 2025. But if you remember back when we were going from n to n plus one, we didn't actually include 2025. We had our last value. Our upper bound was 2024 on the n values. And so that's this value right here. So our last term is gonna be at k equals 45. Okay, so now going ahead to calculate this, we'll start with the right because it's the easiest, just adding up ones. So that sometimes can be a little confusing, but we're adding, it's just one plus one plus one all the way to 45. The only thing you need to keep in mind is we're starting at two. If it started at one, this would be 45, but because we're starting at two, this value is gonna be 44 right here. And then next we'll look at this one right here, the sum from two to 45. For now, for this sum from two to 45 of k, so for this, you could either do it with the arithmetic series formula we just used, or you could do it with the first 45 natural numbers minus the k equals one term that we haven't included. Let's do that, I think. So we'll do, for the first 45 natural numbers, it's just 45 times this plus one. So it's 45 times 46 over two minus the first term, which is just a one. Cancel two with 46 and we get 23. And for 23 times 45 minus one, what we're gonna get for this is just 1,034. So we'll make a note, we got 1034 right here for this sum. Last, we've got the sum of our k squared terms from two to 45. We can, again, like we did before, we can use our formula for the first n natural numbers squared. The formula for that's gonna be n times n plus one times two n plus one over six where our n value is gonna be 45, and we can't forget we need to subtract off one at the end. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna have 45 times n plus one, which is 46. Two n plus one is gonna be 91 over six, subtract one. Doing this out, you're gonna get 31,394. It's making me wonder how, hopefully they allow you to have a calculator because this would be kind of tedious. This would be kind of, a, this would be kind of a lot of work on the exam. But for this sum here, we have 31,394. So putting this all together, crunching the numbers, we have two times 31,394 minus three times 1034 plus 44. And no, I can't do it in my head. So what we have here for our final solution of this is just gonna be 59,730 and that's it. Okay, that one was kind of a lot of work. I'm wondering if maybe there was some shortcuts, although looking at the answer, it seems like you were gonna to have to crunch some numbers, but I don't know, maybe there is a quicker way. So I'll have to look into that and think about it. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.